Susan Gannon. And like she said, I am the co-owner of Serenity Enhancement Center. And our center is located right here in Centerville. And my sister is Daphne Young, and she's a registered nurse and a licensed um, home administrator. And she works with Tracy at Autumn Lakes. So my job at Serenity is I am a certified cognitive stimulation instructor. Woo, that's a big word, right? So basically, it ties into everything that Beverly was just talking about, which was so fascinating. Let's give Beverly another round of applause. It is so important for our brain health to, to stay cognitive. So before we get started, um, we have a couple things that we're going to do. First is everybody has learned sign language here, right? Everybody knows a little bit of sign language? Everybody knows how to say hi, right? So what I'm going to teach you is one word in sign language, which is the word friend. Take your hands, put your pointer finger up, hug them together, okay? And that is the word friend. So what I want you to do is you're all sitting at a table, across the room, whatever. I want you all to use some sign language and say, hey, friend, and put a smile on your face, okay? We've got to relax our bodies. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is, because everybody's been kind of sitting for a little while, is we're going to do what I love to do at our center. It's called our belly laugh. So everybody, take your right hand and raise it up. Find your belly button. Some of you may have innies, some of you may have outies. It doesn't matter as long as you have one. If you don't, please don't tell me. Okay, I want you to squeeze a little inch. Now, those people you just waved to and you said hello to friends, if you don't have an inch, squeeze one of your new friends, okay? They have, may have an extra inch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna laugh for 30 seconds. Now, the record at our center is by Miss Mary Ruth Meredith, who has passed away this year, and her record is six minutes. Now, we're not gonna laugh for six minutes, but we're gonna do it for 30 seconds, and I need someone to time us. Who's got a watch with a little second hand timer? Tracy, you got one? And we're gonna keep our hands on our belly, and we're gonna laugh, and if you can't laugh, oh my God, I'm gonna come over and jickle you. Are you ready? Doesn't matter if you go ho, 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 he, 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 ha, ha, ha. Doesn't matter. We're going to get, get some good energy, right? On our marks. Everybody's got their hands on their bellies. Okay. And we're going to start. One, two, three. Ha, 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 Come on, I hear this table over here. Come on. Ha, 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 ha. You were wonderful. Ha, 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 ha. Ho, 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 ho. Come on. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I got one over here. I love her. I love her. I love her. I love her. Let me know when the 30 seconds are. Don't you feel better? Okay, now, Beverly covered so much stuff that I don't have to cover hardly any of that. So what we're gonna just use is what she taught us today. So because we had lunch and you've been sitting all day long, she got you up when walking, but I need you to do a little exercise because we need to get energy because it's Friday. Who's excited about Friday, right? Oh wait, let's try that again. Who's excited about Friday? Yeah. There we go. Wonderful. This is going right up my dress. Oh my God. Okay, I'm going to have to put this in my pocket a little differently. All right. If you'll just see my wire. And I'm being recorded while I say that. All right, so we're going to do what's called Qigong. I, I may be saying it wrong, um, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but it's a Chinese um, exercise that actually invigorates the body. So everybody needs to... It's okay. No, it's okay. Just tuck it in your pocket. Is it in this pocket? Oh, there, no, oh, there we go. Okay, I'm... I'm whew. There you go. I'm sure I'm going to get drinks and dessert later from these two. Yeah. I'm going to move this up so it's not where your hands are most of the time. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> this is an exercise 
to kind of get you a little energy, right? Because you've been sitting for a little bit. But it is a chair exercise that you can do at home with your loved one. Because how many of you here are community uh, caregivers? Raise your hand if you're taking care of somebody. Okay. This is something you can do at home, okay? So everybody needs to push back from their chair. All right. Is everybody, you have to give yourself some space. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rock, okay? So you're going to go up on your toes, and you're going to kind of lean forward, kind of like when you're in a rocking chair, okay? So you go up on your toes and back. So you're just like rocking your body, just rocking your body. So up on your toes, on your heels. And we're just rocking our body, right? I'm just going to do that for about 30 seconds. Make you dizzy. If you start to feel dizzy, don't do it. As Beverly says, do not do anything that I ask you to do if it hurts, okay? If it's a little uncomfortable for you mentally, I still want you to do it. Okay, we're gonna just keep on rocking. Keep on rocking, all right. Now, we're gonna do tapping. How many of you know what tapping is? We all are made up of energy, right? We have these meridians in our bodies, and we're going to tap vigorously on our left arm up and on the way back down, and I want you to tap, get your body awake, right? You've been sitting, get that food moving, Go up your right arm. We're just going to do this for Yep, take your hand, your palm. Put your palm, tap. Okay, we're just tapping. This is something you can do with your loved one. Somebody's getting on your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> tap yourself, don't tap them. You know, that gets a little dangerous, right? All right. Take your right hand. Pretend you have a balloon in it. Okay, just pretend like you got a little balloon. Right, I'm just popping it up. All right, do that for like 30 seconds. Somebody can count or not. Like me, I don't count. I just move to the left hand and I start going over here. Okay, we're tapping. Now this next one, I'm not sitting down. Okay, but I'll, I, and I have a dress on, so I might not show it to you. But you're going to take your right arm up and move your left leg up like you're marching, okay? And then as this comes down, just relax. And I want you to do the opposite with the left hand, and then breathe. And just do this a couple times. We're just stretching and getting our blood flowing, okay? That's all we're doing, okay? <clears throat> and I'm kind of shortening these. If you're at home, you can do them for a little bit longer. Okay, take your hands, put them together. Take your palms, face them out like this. Okay, everybody's got it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, and this definitely, if it hurts to go too high, do not do it. Take a deep breath in, pull it up as high as you can. And as your way down, you're gonna go down and turn your wrist back towards you, your palms. Release your hands down to your side. We're going to do it again. Interface your hands. And all the way up as far as you can. And as you come down, face your palms towards you. And let your arms relax. And we're going to do one more. Just stretching out. And then as it comes down, Relax. Oh, don't you feel so much better? There's a couple more on there. We're not going to do them, okay? Because it's Friday and I know you guys want to get out of here. Now, I need Katie to come up here because we're getting ready to do a brain exercise. So everybody reach up, grab your magic back, your, your little bag, and put on your thinking cap. Mine is orange. It does not go with my outfit, but I don't care. I, no, I need you because you're my victim. I need someone to be time keeper. Tracy, come on up here. Now, <clears throat> We pass out a piece of paper to everybody, right? You pass out that big pack. So don't flip it over yet. This is listening part. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a cognitive exercise for your brain. And I'll explain it after we're done. It's a two-minute exercise. Now, Katie, it's her last day, so we're going to put her on the spot. She's going to have to come up here with a pen. And she's going, and we're going to document hers. Now, I'm not going to document yours, but you can play along if you have a phone. 
you can time yourself. But when I say go, you're going to flip your paper over and there's an alphabet that says A through Z and you are going to write down a man's name, not a woman's name, a man's name for each letter of the alphabet. On your mark, do you need a pen? You're going to do it. You're getting timed and you're going to time her. Don't think. Gives me a second to catch my breath. No, those go to the table. No, those don't go yet. Oh my God, I can't get to my phone. I gotta get the timer. Woo. And go. When it says whatever she's done, hit the timer. And the market set go. You got two minutes. All right, time, it's two minutes, okay. Uh, you got all 26? Wonderful. How many of you got all 26 before the two minutes? Raise your hand. Give yourself a big round of applause and a pat on the back. Now, the rest of you, 90% people, did not. But that's okay, because normally most people don't, because they get hung up on some letters, right? So you get hung up on the letter like Q and U and Z, and you're like, oh my God, I don't know anybody. Like when I did this, I went through every man I dated, and I went, oh, yeah. I didn't date any U's, but. So let's give Katie a big round of applause because she got 25. And it's her last day, and I think she's done a wonderful job putting this conference together, so a big one. You are now done. So why? I didn't get that. Yes, you can. So I, I didn't get you because I'm so stuck on you. Oh, my <laughs> God, that's adorable. That's adorable. Okay, so what she was doing, what all of you were doing was monotasking. How many of you hear that big word, oh, I, I'm a great multitasker. I just can do this and this and this. I can talk on the phone and drive my car and sing the song. That is not true. None of you can do any of it, okay? You cannot be on the phone at work to send an email because next thing you know, you have sent the email without rereading it and you've given the person on the phone some wrong information all because you're not being mindful. And mindfulness is really what my presentation is about, is being in the moment. And as caregivers, you really have to be in the moment when you're taking care of somebody, right? Because they have so many things going on. We're gonna do another activity, and before I get to it, I'm gonna tell you a little story. So, a long time ago, I was at this uh, function, and um, I know all of you can relate. I saw someone I hadn't seen in a couple months, and I went up to her and I said, oh my God, when are you gonna have that baby? Oh. And she said, I had that baby four months ago. And I said, oh my God, the words came out of my mouth. I did not stop and think. And so the next exercise we're gonna do is going to help you inhibit. So how many of you ever had that? You stuck your foot in your mouth, you didn't mean to, I do it all the time. Okay, so this exercise is actually gonna be done at your table with your group of, of friends. So the ones who are on the side, if you could kind of fill in the tables, we're gonna hand out another thing. So it's called sentence inhibition. And I want to read my notes on this real quick before I get stuck where we work. It's called sentence inhibition, and it works our prefrontal cortical regions. All right, so this happens especially when people have dementia. They say things that are inappropriate, okay, at inappropriate times. So we're going to have to have one person who's the facilitator at your table. So this is a piece of paper. And I'm going to wait till she feels ill and it's just, so everybody got one? Do you ladies want to come join this table, folks, sir? Oh, you're going to do one at your table. I only had 10. I only had 10. Does every table have one? I have yours. Okay, here's, here's an example, okay? So if I say Mary had a little I don't want you to say the word lamb. I want you to stop, inhibit your brain. This helps you be mindful of what you're going to say. So I want you to stop and not say lamb. So you might say Mary had a little brick, or it doesn't really matter. Whatever word you want to use. 
So somebody's going to have to be the facilitator, okay? I put the words that I don't want you to say on the side. Those are the words you want to stop yourself. So you should do it quickly, okay? So like, let's do the first one. It says, his guess was as good as? Gold. Somebody shoot something out. Gold. Gold, right, because most, most people say, hey, his guess, his guess was good as any, right? So somebody's going to do the writing, and the other ones are just going to inhibit, okay? And you want to do it quickly, okay? Because we don't have much time, so I'm just going to give you two minutes. Whatever you get done, you get done, right? Okay, so that's a great exercise, okay? But we, I have 15 minutes left, okay? So I um, am kind of rushing through this because I know you guys want to get out of here. But one of the things I like to think about our brains is like, and Beverly really talked about a lot of you know, good things that you do for your brains, but I want you to imagine like your brain is a big storage lot with different buildings, okay? And in each different building, there's a, a filing cabinet with a, a thought or a memory, a person's name. And what happens to us so many times is that we're not being mindful, we're not in the minute, and we can't remember everything. Our brain can only hold seven things on our shelves. So let's say I walk into the store and I say, oh my God, I just ran into somebody and I can't remember her name and she's talking to me like she knows me. And I get home and I go, oh my God, that was Helen. Helen, 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 why couldn't I remember her name? And I call that like tip of the tongue. And Beverly talked about it earlier. When we have something that's like right here, but we can't remember it, it's somewhere in that filing cabinet. Maybe in my filing cabinet, it was in building you in filing cabinet, you know, 23, because I hadn't seen Helen. So don't be upset when your filing cabinet gets a little bit of, you know, craziness. But this is what's really good and very important about sleep. It helps your filing cabinets reorganize themselves at night. So that's why the sleep is really important. You've got to get your filing done, right? So that's that part. Um, when we're doing the sentence inhibition, we're being mindful and we're stopping to take a moment. As caregivers and people who work with caregivers, we have to stop and stop judging. So on the top of that page, Michael, read the very first handout, which is mindfulness. Does anybody have that? Yep, right here. Can you read that out loud to everybody? Pay attention on purpose in the present moment without judgment. Okay, so how many of you practice mindfulness and kindness? We all try, right? We really do. And I believe that we can change the world by practicing more mindfulness. Because when you are mindful of what you put into your body, what you, you know, do over here, how you say it over here, you actually have less stress. And as you have less stress, you won't be more prone to diseases like cancer, dementia, that kind of thing. It helps with your aging. So because we only have a couple minutes left, we're going to do four different techniques of mindfulness, okay? which is staying present in the moment. How many of you today, I'll ask this question before we do it, um, when you were eating your lunch, actually tasted the strawberries and the blackberries? That's being in the moment. But so many times we're on this autopilot, and you know we could be driving down the road and go, oh, did I just go through that red light? Was it a red light? I don't remember, right? because we're so focused on something else. When you've been doing these activities today, you weren't stressed out. You weren't thinking about, oh my God, I gotta get my Christmas shopping done. I've got to, what am I gonna have for dinner? You were actually engaged at that moment. And that is what you need to do to be mindful. So we're going to do um, four different techniques. And I'm gonna read these because, um, and I don't have glasses, but it's okay. We do these at our center, and we started doing these at our center about two months ago to help our participants who do have sometimes some form of dementia. And what we have found is through the day, they actually can stay with us a little bit longer each time. So if, if you have someone at home um, who, it doesn't matter if they have dementia, maybe they're having a bad day, or maybe they're bedridden, or maybe they can't go out. You have to be mindful of whatever their impairment is or whatever their condition is and come at them at a place of love and kindness, okay? 
So how do you do that? How do you stop getting so, oh my God, he's asked me three times for a cup of tea and I am in the middle of doing laundry and you just feel like frustrated. So you have to stop, take a deep breath and breathe, right? So I want everybody to close, well, actually look around the room, just take a quick look, okay? And we're gonna start with the breathing thing. And we're just going to put our feet flat on the floor. And what you wanna do with your palms is because you wanna open up your energy, okay? And keep your palms faced up to the ceiling. I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to close your eyes, okay? No peeking. All right, you're gonna begin by sitting very comfortably. And we've already looked around the room. And you're gonna take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Fill up your lungs, your ribs, and your stomach, and close your eyes, and let it out. And we're gonna do three of these. And as you fill up your air, feel the air going in through your nose, down into your lungs and your ribs and your belly and filling it up. And as you breathe out, feel it escape your lungs, your ribs. It's like a like a tide, like the ocean, it's like a wave. You breathe it in and you breathe it out. And you're just slowly relaxing. If your mind starts to wander, bring it back to your breathing. And just hold that thought of breathing. And we're just gonna do this for 30 seconds. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, we're gonna to go to our hands and feet. You're paying attention. You can feel the weight of your hands on your legs. Okay, are your hands hot? Are they cold? Still thinking about your breathing. You're staying centered on your thoughts. Do your hands feel dry? Think about how your hands feel. Now move your focus to your feet. Can you feel your socks? Can you feel your feet in your shoes? Hold your attention on your feet being in your shoes. Are your feet hot? Are your toes cold? And bring it back up to your hands. Feel your hands again. And return back to your breathing and stay centered. Your awareness of gravity, feel your body in the chair, the heaviness of your body. Notice where the sensations of your weight in your body are. Notice where your body con contacts the chair. Is your chair warm? Can you feel the gravity pulling you down? If your mind wanders, come back to your thoughts of where your body is. Then I want you to visualize your center. You're gonna feel your upper body. Can you feel your stomach and your chest? Can you feel your back, your shoulders, your neck? Notice the left side of your body, the right side of your body. Continue to breathe in and out, <coughs> relaxing you move your body slightly, can you feel your center line? Very gently and slightly rock forward and backward, side to side. Let your body settle back into the center. Slightly rotate your body left, then right, and just feeling the axis of your body, of your center. I want you to just find your center and breathe. Focus your tension on your center, and then bring it up through the top of your head, all the way back down to your chair, and feel your whole upper body. Keep your attention there. Return back to your breathing, and when you're ready, you can open up your eyes.
Okay, so everybody's eyes open. Now, do you feel the energy in the room change? Mm -hmm. The energy when we started the presentation was woo, and now we're kind of all calm. So when you're caring for your loved one, these are the people in your community. You have to reach out to your community. Do not try to be the Lone Star Ranger and say, hey, I can do it all by myself. Because, you know, my mother told me when I was pregnant, she said, it takes a village to raise a child. And I believe it takes a community to help with everyone in here. And so when you look around, these are your connections. And, and enjoy those connections and practice that kindness. One of the things I want to leave you with is, is something that has helped me remain mindful because I work at it every day. I have a word that I cannot say. Um, and I'm very mindful of it, so I'm going to think of it right now because it's really hard for me. So the word I have trouble saying is library. What I hear is library. Okay, so I, I've been saying it for 50 years and nobody told me. And I'm like, how come nobody told me I'm saying that word wrong? I was like, oh Lord, and then I have another word. I say the word almost, I say almost. And that's the way I hear it because nobody ever told me any different. It wasn't the teacher's fault in Queen Anne's County. I came here, I had a great education, but apparently when I was in the library, I was saying I was in the library. So I wasn't really saying it right. So we all have those little things, right? But now I'm really mindful of it. And I tried to not say that word. I tried to use the word media center or anything else I can say <laughs> other than that word. So I've learned that about myself. And it takes me being mindful. I watched a show with um, a couple of Dr. Joe Dispenza's and things. And one of the things I have, and I do this at my center, is when I start to feel like I'm having maybe not enough patience I take my right hand and I place it on my heart. So everybody, this is what I'm gonna leave you with. Okay, and I want you to tap your heart. And I say, I have love and understanding. And that's what I want, the biggest thing I want you to be mindful of, is to have love and understanding. So if you're having an argument with the person you're taking care of, or they've called you a hundred times, I want you to just think of me and I want you to tap. And tap into your own love and say, I have love and understanding. And if it takes you 10 minutes to get that love and understanding, you just keep on tapping because it will happen. It doesn't matter if your best friend calls you and they're yelling at you because you didn't return their favorite shirt. I got love and understanding for Sally. Yep, I got love and understanding. You just tap, okay? You have to be mindful. And mindfulness starts with us. And we have to practice kindness to go out to the community and so this is a great chance to do it because it is Friday. So I challenge all of you to go out there and just really just love each other. And, you know, talk to these people. These are your community. This is who's going to help you. So if you have any questions, you know, see each of them. If you have any questions about what I do, you know, you can call me. Um, I'm right down the road and come see our center. And if anybody has any questions, I'll answer them now. Otherwise, you can get out of here.